Did you know right away when Kendrick Lamar did the control verse that that was a corrupt verse? Yeah. You caught that right away? Yeah, I caught that right away. Because okay. I was listening to the one that he did with Terrence Martin. Mm -hmm. So, and then Corrupt was telling me about it. And it all blew up. And I'm just like, shit, hey, that's the little homie. Kind of. How, how did you feel coming? You know what I mean? Because it's almost a continuation of what y'all... You know what I mean? By quoting corrupt, it's it's kind of like the family tree type of type of thing. I mean, it's all it's all related, man. Like I yeah. said before, that Dr. Dre tree. Yeah. That's a big branch. Yeah. You know what I mean? When we all stick together, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, they call me Uncle Daz now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I fuck with everybody. And I love it. What do you think of the new uh, Kendrick album? I love it. Yeah. I got this shit in the car right now. King Kunta. King Kunta. You motherfucking right. I'm Kunta on these hoes. It, it almost seems like there's kind of a move back into, you know, remember how it was in like the late 80s where all yeah. the hot rappers were the conscious rappers? I mean, until it. Yeah, the Brand Nubians. Brand Nubian. Lord Jamal. Lord, Shout yeah. out to Lord Jamal. Yeah, you watched Lord Jamal? Yeah, he be kicking the real. I like that. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> he don't be taking no shit from no motherfucker. Period. Peace to the gods. You hear me? He's like a Dick Gregory of hip hop. You watched the Corrupt interview? Yeah, I love it. You talked to Corrupt about it? We love it. We, we chitter chatted with him about it all the time. What did you think the first time you saw it? He bust. <laughs> <laughs> That's my nigga, he fucked up. He kicking the truth. You know, you tell the truth when he fucked up, he gonna let you know. Right. Fuck that shit. I mean, you know, I, I've seen like hashtag like sleeper cells, like you know. What hey, I mean, that's like, true like, corrupt for you right there. Don't get him mad. <laughs> it's the big. Do you home. agree with him with his overall stance? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, hey, this is where we from. This is what we do. You know, it's a shame that you know, East Coast West Coast war and all that other type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But you know, do you think that the media played the shit up? to the point where, where it was, or was there really a, a real problem with y'all? Not really wasn't a real problem with us, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was cool with Biggie and we was cool with Pac, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then the media put the fire to it, you know what I'm saying? It was probably good for the sales. It wasn't all that Twitter and Instagram yeah. back then, you know what I'm saying? So it was really like, pay what you weigh to get stuff started. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we wasn't really down with it. Well, you know, Corrupt was saying how he, you know, y'all love Puffy, y'all love Biggie, you know, y'all yeah. love East Coast music. I was trying to get Puffy to mix the Dog Pound out back then. Oh, really? Yeah. You wanted Puffy to mix Dog Pound? Yeah, because I didn't know how to mix back then. Dre, Dre didn't mix it? Take it too long. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> he was on Dre time. Yeah, but then, you know, <laughs> Shug came and pushed the button and Dr. Dre came and mixed the album. Okay. You know, I was trying to do things on my own back then. Okay. So, so did you know Biggie? Yeah, I know Biggie. He was cool. He used to come down here. I used to serve him weed. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to come to the studio with him and Mace. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And uh, when he used to come down here and do, you know, the 92.3 little things on the corner with the vans and stuff, uh -huh. I used to meet him over there. Yeah, Biggie was one of the greats. Yeah, I fuck with him. I did two songs with him that I got in the vault somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah, you I got two songs of Biggie. They yeah. never came out. Never came out on my stuff. It was on ADATS. Oh. So, you know, I got to pull yeah, them ADATS pull them out, out and find a machine. But I got them on there. You know what I'm saying? So it was just y'all two? It was just us two. That's crazy. One was a verse and one he did a hook for me. I heard a rumor about you. You tell me whether it's, it's true, true or false. What? I heard that you and Lil' Kim was an item at one point. No, nah, we weren't no item. Nah. That's my home girl though, we hung out. Yeah, you know I'm just I rock with her, you know what I'm saying? We was you know, you know, that was the you know, like we said, we was family. We was all hanging out together, you okay. know what I'm saying? You know, we would have knocked the motherfucker down for her. Okay. So what happened after the Source Awards when Suge went on stage and, and kind of See, that really to me, that really wasn't the Source Awards that really kicked everything off. Okay. That's the second Source Awards. So nobody really talked about the first Source Awards. Was there a video of that? It should have been. That's when Tupac came out on Tribe Called Quest. Oh, on their set. When it was accepting the award. Where's that footage at? And then I got up on stage and said, you know, 
da, 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 how Snoop gave it up for him like that. Yeah. I got on stage and said, fuck all y'all. <laughs> you know what okay. I'm saying? It was me, Corrupt, Rage, and uh, Nate Dog. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And we went through there and it was it was all New York. We was the only West Coast. We seen Outkast and them, you know what I'm saying? And it was sicker than that second one. Really? Yeah. Okay, so then the second Source Awards happened. Yeah. And then y'all went to go film New York, New York. Yeah. Okay. Now, from what Corrupt told me last time, New York, New York was supposed to be like a, a tribute record to New York. Yeah, it was a tribute record, but they took it the wrong way. Melly Mel wrote the hook. We just got it from him. Right. It's, you know, his song, you know, but they took it like we was jabbing at him. And, you know, and uh, all, you know, well, all hell broke loose. I heard it wasn't even supposed to be like, you know, it wasn't supposed to be kind of like a New York disc record, but the shooting happened. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Did it? Did it? Well, I, 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 I researched this a little bit. Y'all went to New York to go film New York, New York, New York, like in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, we went to Brooklyn, Red Hook. Red Hook, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I had heard that Biggie called in to Hot 97. Yeah, we was down, we was in Times Square, and he got on the radio just literally like, motherfuckers on so-and-so corner right there by the middle of the thing, handle business, and da 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 da, -da. Right. People like, don't know that part. Like, people who didn't live in New York, because, you know, yeah, this is on before Hot 97. YouTube. Right, so Biggie called yeah. in to Hot 97. To and if it was Hot 97, then they was, you know, they record every show, right? Yeah. Hey, pull the files up. No, well, I've talked to people who actually heard it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've talked he to... He really just told me, yeah, go out there and blast them motherfuckers. Represent this New York. They don't belong out here. They shooting a the video. They got six foes and shit out of here and hopping and dropping and all that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what it is? Biggie's always seemed as kind of the victim of this whole thing. And people don't know, you know, just to be fair, people don't know that part. So y'all in New York shooting a video. He calls in a Hot 97 and says, Dog Pond up here in New York shooting a video at this location. Yeah. And then the shooting happened. I mean, you know, people start representing you. It'll be the same way in the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, it's an epidemic. It all happened. And they were telling me how Nate Dogg was really the most gangster one out of the crew. Me and Nate Dogg was the gangster. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> uh, everybody was gangster out of the crew. We, me and Nate was just the robbers of the crew. You know. Yeah. Well, Michelle A. In our interview that hasn't come out yet, mentioned that at one point Nate Dogg robbed the Taco Bell. Man, that bitch lying. She incriminating the homie already. <laughs> She's a snitch. All right, but well you and Nate Dogg was the yeah, you was know, the criminals of the crew. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We put it down in the crew, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, when it come to whooping ass, <laughs> see the Nate Dogg of dads. You know what I'm saying? Corrupt would tell you that. Uh, how much did it hurt when Nate Dogg passed so young? Man, that hurt me, you know what I'm saying? Because I went to see him before he died, and how he was looking, it just, you know, made me get myself together, you know what I'm saying? Because how old was he, like? 30-something? Yeah. Like 30, 37, 38, something like that? Yeah. So, you know, um, just eating right, living right, you know what I'm saying? And just getting it together. Um, what exactly happened to him? Like, what, what He had you... a stroke or something the first time, and he had a second stroke, you know? So. I mean, you know, what, what Nate Dogg did... I mean, like, you never seen a singer, like, sing like a rapper. You know what I mean? It, and it seemed like so many people have, you know, like, oh, Akon's the new Nate Dogg. Like, you know, and every so often you get this, oh, Jeremiah, the new Nate Dogg. Like, you know, yeah. when, when you have someone who, who does that, they always get compared back to Nate Dogg. Shout out to the Migos, man. They gave it up for the homie Nate Dogg, man. You know, I like the Migos. Yeah, shout out to Nate Dogg. I had to regulate. You motherfucking right. You know what I'm saying? Just a uh, big homie going to be here forever. You know, music going to be here to the end of time. Well, Snoop tattooed his face on, on his arm, right? Yeah, he did that. I was there for that one. Was that his first tattoo? No, that wasn't his first tattoo. Okay. He had oh, no. got the ones on the arm first. Then oh, he okay. went and got that one. Okay, so like his second tattoo. Yeah, third tattoo. Third One, tattoo. two. Oh, oh, okay. I thought. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, man, that, that shit was sad. Yeah, that yeah. really hurt me. 
you've been around so long. But I'm so looking so young. Yeah. Look, looking just the same as when yeah. you came out. Best but, you know, we've seen so many rappers come and go mm-hmm. during the time. Why do you think Snoop, you know, because it seems like every time I see Snoop, you're always there. You know, you always you always rolling with him. Yeah. It seems like y'all two are hella close. That's my cousin. Exactly. You know, but people, you know, cousins aren't always close. I have cousins I don't talk to that much. Yeah. You know, y'all, y'all see. But we really grew up as, from day one, you know, taking baths together, sleeping in the same bed every what, day. Was you guys grew up in the same house? Right. You know, I used to go over his house every day because my mama and his mama, his best friends, and his daddy is my uncle. Ah, okay. So, but wouldn't nobody keep us because we were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they try to push you away. Yeah, yeah, you take Snoop and Dale, Ma. And, and da da da, you know what I'm saying? So we was always stuck together. Okay. Why do you think Snoop is as big as he is this long after he came out? Man, he got a great mind, man. He, he's like a visionary, man. He just, he can shoot dice real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker that shoot dice real good gonna be lasting long, you know what I'm saying? So he just an innovator, man. He just... He does the damn thing, man. You don't see artists with uh, long like, 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 like for example, you don't see no other rappers anywhere near his age range on Empire. <laughs> you know, what I mean, the hottest urban TV show. You know, premiering his new song. Yeah, twenty something. Like, I mean, he came out what 90, 90, 92, 90, 91. Yeah, the end of ninety one. Deep cover. Well, yeah, deep cover ninety one. This is two thousand ninety ninety two. You're talking about almost 25 years. Yeah. So almost 25 years after he came out, he's still popping. Popping. Mm-hmm. You know where that's you're, a great team. You're only talking about a couple of human beings have ever done that. I mean, you're talking about Snoop, Jay Z, Eminem, huh? Sinatra. Sinatra was getting feel for a long time. Sinatra. Checked out. So so you you would put him in the category of a uh, yeah. Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know something? I, I I'm not. I'm not mad at that. Man, everybody knows who Snoop Dogg is. I mean, we done been to places you wouldn't believe it ain't Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> but we put up the picture, I think, in Korea with a dude with a black face. Yeah. Yeah, man. We on our way to Seoul, Korea. But were you with Snoop at the, when he went to the White House? No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> let me up, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the the sugar the sugar restraining order was still in effect during that time. Yeah, it's still in effect now. Shit. At one point, you and corrupt were at odds, yeah. but now y'all are cool as hell. Yeah. You know what? What caused y'all to be cool again after after like beefing for a few years? You know, I remember we, when me and you were working on that mixtape together? I went to go see corrupt, and I'm like, oh well, you know, I just want to say just. Let you know, me and Dad's doing some shit together. He's like, no, we don't really fuck with Dad's, and it was kind of tense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then when I saw y'all, y'all was making songs together. I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. Like, yeah, I, 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 I want to see that. I reached out to him. You know what I mean? Because you know, I love. He wanted to reach out to me, but you know what I'm saying. But I reached out to him. It was all Suge Knight doing all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but okay, okay, no stop, no stop. You know, that type of shit. So, you know, it got to that. But, you know, it was bigger than that. Y'all the dog pound. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what? how, how can y'all be beefing? And let's get this thing back together. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never hurt each other. We could have. Right. Could have been a lot of that. But we never did that. You know what I'm saying? Right. My focus was on Suge Knight. You know, catching him slipping everywhere I could get him. What, were you upset that he went back to death row afterwards? Yeah, because we had just talked about that, and then he went back, I mean, you know, and the whole nine. But, you know, we here now, kicking and going, and, and he there. You know right. what I mean? And, and he said, because I interviewed him, I don't know if we put this part out yet or, or not, but he said that, you know, you and Snoop accepted him back. Yeah, cause that's, our, that's our brother corrupt, you know what I'm saying? It's the dog pound. We run this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? We got too many songs and be not doing nothing. And the way that going with Suge Knight, that's not the way right now, because he don't give a fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? You had a lawsuit against Suge that yeah. went on for a while, but you, you won that lawsuit, right? Yeah, I won that lawsuit. It had to do with a lot of publishing money, not money that he had personally, but money that was in, held up. Oh, okay. And that we get now. Okay. That's a part of the, 
You know what I'm saying? Are you, are you happy with the way the lawsuit worked out? What you think? What you when I pull up outside, what you think? <laughs> hey, you know, I'm not a flossable type guy, but I like to be flossable. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's nice to have nice things. Hey, you know, I'm a good manager. Yeah. Okay. But it seemed like the, the beef with you and Suge has been going on forever. Yeah. I mean, you know, he beat us out a lot of shit, you know? So, so he, there's still money that you feel you're, you're owed? Now, as far as like the new people that's licensing our shit out, mm. and like I had a problem with people that was using our lyrics, and I was asking the publisher, what's, what's up with this? You know what I'm saying? Because you go on the site called whosampled.com, right. and you put you know, artist's name, it show you everybody that and took a piece of song from you. Right. And I'm like, everybody been taking lyrics for years. And making building they you know they social network and they you know album sales off lyrics that we did you know what I'm saying so right. that's called you know shit hey I that's want publishing. my I want my shit you know so what I'm saying you, you never got all that I mean I was fighting for it all these years you know what I'm saying but now I finally got the attention you know what I'm saying because everybody you know we the homies but I'm like fuck that shit this is business right. you know what I'm saying but, I, I mean, don't hang Snoop, with you niggas uh, Snoop and Suge worked it out at one point. Yeah, but we didn't. Snoop yeah. used to say, man, keep dad's back. <laughs> <laughs> keep dad's back. I'm like, fuck that shit. I could have jumped out on his ass in Vegas, but, I, you know, it was killing me. But Snoop was like, hold on. Don't fuck this up. So I'm like, you know, I respected that. I'll get him another day. But I ain't got to get his ass, you know. Karma and the Lord works in good, mysterious ways. You seen the video? Yeah, I seen it. It's a shame what he did, you know. Dang. I don't wish nothing, you know, no bad on nobody, but, hey. You mentioned that, I think uh, on your Instagram, that he turned informant. Look how this nigga Suge Knight is walking up and the police is shaking his hand. Does that look like a police informant to you? Look, hey, how you doing? Yeah, and we're not going to convict you. Shit. I ain't never had that many cases and still on the street, you know what I'm saying? Sugar, yeah, Suge always gets out. That's what I mean. So, shit, I've, he used to work for the police at Rampart, you know what I'm saying? Look what at all. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, you know, he had a lot of officers that worked for him in the Rampart Police Department. In terms of security? Yeah, all the motherfuckers, they don't, you know, they dirty, though. You know what I'm saying? They put a restraining on me for life, a restraining order on me for life. With so I, I, man, I get tagged every time I go somewhere. What, what do you mean? Man, that's what the police said. Man, we never seen no shit like this. Man, it's come from a higher source or something like this. Man. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, this motherfucker been on me for 20 years. So what do you mean by tagged? Like when I go through customs and I go out of you know the country, I always get pulled over. And they oh. ask me, you know. Oh, interesting. Right. So I okay. got to go to court for that. But I'm getting it off but because they like, this is unheard of. So every time you leave the country, something yeah. triggers an investigation. A Suge Knight tag pop up on me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For being on death row. I don't know if it was a federal or what. You know, back then, there was a lot of shit going on. So, you know, I used to think I was being tailed all the time. Yeah. Still do to this day, you know. Probably all are, to a certain degree. I mean, you know, but they find I'm just going to the dispensary. <laughs> That's legal out here, too. So. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, I mean, Suge is on strike number two, though. He's still on strike number three. He's on strike number three? Yeah. I mean, this case or the case before? If you, you already went to, you know, probation, so that's first strike already when they put you on probation. Okay. You've been to the penitentiary. That's the second strike. And they got two cases now, so that's two, three, four, and one strike. You know what I mean? So, hey. California don't be playing out here with these gangbang laws and the other shit, you know what I'm saying? They trying to make an example out of motherfuckers. It's a shame, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, that's the life of a gangster. What was it like to work on The Chronic? I mean, because some people, I mean, The Chronic is one of these projects that people go argue, but a lot of people going to say that's the best hip-hop album of all time. Man, it was riots and all kind of shit going on, man. It's just like, the best, I think that was the best time of my life as a, like I said before, I reached the pinnacle of rap. 
you know what I mean? I did a song with everybody you ever could think of, produced up and think of. And it was just a lot of smoking weed. I tell Joe, he stayed downstairs, he had a weed shop, rest in peace. And uh, we used to go down there and buy all our weed and go up to Solar and make the records with a, you know, where um, motherfucking Shalimar, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, everybody that Dick Griffey had up in there, we was in that studio working, you know what I'm saying? And I was recording over his masters. You know what I'm saying? And he come in there, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this is, this is Shalimar's master. I'm like, well, hey, I'm going to record me snooping for rough on this thing. You know what I mean? And, uh, and just Dr. Dre showing us track for track. Orange, he showed me how to use the drum machine, uh -huh. program the drum machine. But Dr. Dre showed me how to take what I had from the drum machine to track it down on each track uh -huh. and to let my, you know, my imagination music go on top of that and add to it and then we start doing the chronic I start producing you know what I'm saying and then I got good at it how much production did you do on the chronic I did a uh, rat-a-tat-tat -tat. oh okay that was you yeah I love I was, that, that was me scratching on there okay I um rapped on a bunch of songs like little ghetto boy these nuts did skits um, little ghetto boy, you know the strings. I put them in there. Mm -hmm. You know, just Dr. Dre just showed us, you know, how to put it together. Did you know how big it was gonna be before it dropped? Man, I was just listening like, damn, this shit sound good. You know what I'm saying? You know, you <laughs> listening to records and they had like samples and you know that yeah. quitty ran, but this shit sounded good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And Dr. Dre was mixing. I was just happy to be in the vicinity as a young. Entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying? And right, cause you were how old at the I time? I was 16. Wow. 15 going on 16. Okay. And I got signed at 17. Crazy. The Chronic came out at 17. So, you know, um, the best time of my life. I bet. Yeah, Did all you? the NWA, that's when Dre left NWA. So it was really going down, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was after EZ, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we cool with Ice Cube, but at the time, we, you know, it was everybody. You know what I'm saying? But just Dr. Dre said so. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, when when the shit came out, <laughs> what's the wildest shit you did? What's the wildest? Because you you were 17 year old on the biggest album in the world. But we didn't really know because we were still in the hood. We didn't know about we could travel here and get, you know what I'm saying? We were still in the hood every day because that's where they kept us, you know? And then Dr. Dre took us to our first show in Chicago with okay. the Ghetto Boys. Okay. Scarface. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we used to have to steal our food in the morning and shit. The homies get up, one steal the eggs, the bacon, all the other stuff, and we'd run out of the store. And then we used to call the homie L, rest in peace from the dog pound. We'd put. 211 187 and let him know that's us. Come to the house, bring four sacks of weed, you know what I'm saying? Because we didn't have no phones. Just to sit on the corner of Whitley, sunset, watch cars pass. Well, I'm going to get one of those, you know, like that. You know, just dreams that came reality, you know what I'm saying? And then when the doggy style come out, then you realize, like, damn, everybody bumping this shit around. Everywhere we go, they was bumping the chronic. Right, the chronic was everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, because. And I know it's a good album because I get residuals from that album to this day. To this day. Right now. Did you ever meet Easy yourself? Yeah, I met Easy. We was at a uh, award show. He came up to me and said, finally we meet, Daz. And something like this. And there was just so much going on. And then he bailed off because, you know, it was at a death row, Easy, Ruthless Records, come function at a thing when Magic Johnson was throwing something at it. It was, it was crazy. Okay. I you made that comment in that skit about Easy, yeah. about Buster ass HIV pussy having, and then Easy actually ended up dying from HIV. Yeah. Um, how, how did you feel when you when you found out about it? Because obviously you didn't know nothing at the time, but I didn't know nothing at the time. You know, it's a it's a shame. You know, I just fell for him, and uh, you know, rest in peace, Easy. You know, it was sad. I liked it Easy. I, you know, I ain't had nothing against Easy. You know what I'm saying? Like Snoop said, we we love Easy. Yeah. 
Yeah. I first knew Easy when I used to uh, when he came out with radio when he had when he was wearing the you know the Air Jordans and all that on the back of the cover. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I was scratching them records and then Snoopy and them used to get dropped off by the DOC in Long Beach. Right. When they used to finish with Easy, I mean with Dr. Dre, and he said, yeah. "Yeah, Easy was there." You know what I'm saying? So, man, I love Easy records. Easy was amazing, man. I mean, yeah. he, he's the one that really, I think, really, really got me into West Coast hip hop. Yeah. You know, I because before there was like you know Egyptian Lover, and you know what I mean. There, Ice there some Ice T. But when Easy came out, it was like yeah, dope wow. man, dope man. You know, I only had the radio version. I mean, Boys in the Hood. That was my first yeah. Easy song. Like Boys in the Hood was like yeah, that was the one wow. right there. <laughs> that was the one. And then when the album came out, I had it all on cassette. Yeah, me too. You know what I'm saying? I still got those cassettes. Yeah, I had on vinyl the the NWA EP, the little four song EP. I didn't get a like... chance to steal them yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> How close were you and Tupac? We was real close. Uh, you know, we both Gemini's. You know what I'm saying? Y- you did uh, "Ambitions of a Rider." Yeah, that was and that was the first song on Tupac's. That was the first song we All did Eyes when on he me. came to Death Row. Okay, so he he got out of jail. Got out of jail. Signed a Death Row. Got off the plane. Got off the plane. We like, what up? What up? <laughs> went to the studio. No, we went to go eat. Went to go eat. At Monty's. Okay, at Monty's. And then we went to can Went to can Studios. And then I had the five songs with the hooks already on there. And then he said he liked that one. So he went in there and redid the Ambitions of a Rider hook. Oh, so you already had the hook written? Yeah. Oh, because so you, you, you know that hook come from Snoop, you know, like back in the days when he had on Stranded on Death Row. Uh, I'm not flagging, but I'm just, just sagging. sagging. I don't deny it. Oh, same, you know same saying? cadence. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just different words, you know, because I had the beat. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? So he came in there and knocked them five out, and I was like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, was he the fastest working rapper you'd ever seen? Yeah, because he was serious, and that made us get on our job a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So from then on, it was just... Knocked him out, and then DJ Quick came in there and mixed him for me. Right, yeah, D- Quick was the, was the main DJ during that time. Yeah, yeah. Did you Engineer. know how big, because, uh, I, I, I mean, Tupac was big. We knew Tupac beforehand, though. You know, okay. we did a lot of work with Tupac before he was on Death Row. When he did Juice, we used to go over his house when he had oh. the laser disc. Right. We was watching it over there, like, hey, come check my movie out, you know what I mean? So, you know, we was already hooked up when you could see old MTV clips and stuff like that from when we was real young, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh-huh. Yeah, and okay. then you know I got him his first big old check. It was like thirty thousand dollars from Death Row when we did a uh, hard on the nigga, but we didn't even put it on Murder was the case. Uh huh. And then we did Gridlock, and then I found that song in the vault, and then we put it on there. But he had got paid for that song, that we got him paid for that song, and we didn't even use it. Right, that was on the mur- yeah, because he showed up on the Murder was the case soundtrack before yeah, I mean, he, he was, was on before he was, he was on Death Row. Yeah, he was on Interscope. Yeah. Okay. How did things change in Death Row when, when Tupac showed up? It was more, shit, we pushing. Pushing even harder, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it was, pushing hard. Okay. And hardly pushing. Um, you did Two of America's Most Wanted. Yeah. How did that song come together? I had a beat and a hook. I was going to sell it to Drew Down. <laughs> okay. But then... <laughs> I can see Drew Down on he that. He went to jail or something, so... <laughs> I had, uh, that was that same night that Tupac was coming into town. Okay. And then uh, Snoop had came to the studio in the middle of the night. Like everything had just getting off the plane, going to the studio, dropping one song, doing another song, then doing two of America one and Snoop walking in the door. Okay, like so it all went time wise, you know what I'm saying? Like click, clock, clock, all right, Snoop walking at three, we done that thing, we doing. I ain't mad at you at 5 in the morning. By 6 in the morning, we was gone. So you did Vicious of a Rider, America's Most Wanted, I Ain't Mad at You. Scandalous. Scandalous. I got my mind made up. Got my mind made up. Uh, all, all the other rappers, like Method Man and Red Method Man? Method Man, we did that at my house. It was it was originally me, Rage, Method Man, Red Man, and Inspector Deck. Okay. But then Rage didn't want to, she didn't want to bust on it with all the dudes on there like that. So I took it to Dr. Dre house. And then he had mixed it, and Tupac came and heard it. Was Dre working a lot on the on the Tupac album, All Eyes on Me? He was Good. working on his album, but you know, when it's album time, 
we take whatever we got and contribute to let you hear what we got and to put it into that project. Okay. So Tupac album come out, uh, All Eyes On Me. Because we had just finished the dog food album. Yeah. So when Tupac came out, we started on his album, which we didn't really get enough time to focus on the dog pound album. It just went three million. So we was like, you know what I'm saying? So we started on that. Because I'm a producer, so I really was just producing yeah. albums. I really wasn't touring and nothing. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really start touring until, you know, after all that. Okay. Um, well, you know, when the dog food album came out, that was the, f that actually came out independent, right? Priority in the scope. Okay. Well, why, why, you know, because a lot of people, they talk about um, Mac Miller's album going number one independent, and they always mention the dog food album before his. Yeah. So that, that was considered an independent album, technically? Yeah. Independent, yeah. So, so we got was paid off that album. We was balling. I bet. <laughs> I was 17, had millions. Yeah, I you know, and then I learned that's how you learn your business taxes. And, <laughs> you know, I remember one time I was just had about got a check for like seventy thousand, went to the bank, was going to let it cash, and next day I was going to buy a pound, and the money was on hold for taxes for thirty thousand, so I had to sign over that, so I knew about you know, I pay these taxes and this money exactly in my name, so that's when I learned to get a company name. Well, I, I remember that that Dog Pond album, that was one of the best sounding albums at the time. That shit well, sounded so so crisp. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It seemed like the technology almost, yeah, you we know was, what I mean? We was, you know, we was uh, playing instruments on them albums, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, recreating and making it sound good with the quality, you know what I'm saying? Like I said before, uh, Dr. Dre's second student into this music shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was Dr. Dre and... The Chronic, then was Daz, the Dog Pound, and whoever else, and Mailman, and whoever, you know, all them other, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I learned the quality of music, and you know, between a wave and an MP3. At what point did Dre leave Death Row? Because yeah. Tupac was already out. After that. Yeah, after Tupac's album was you know, was already released, you know, uh, California Love came out, it was yeah, huge. Yeah, that's when he was, was working song. on the second one. Okay. And, so, um, and um, I think when he did that, what's that, No Diggity? Yeah. Around that time. Around that time. I mean, from your point of view, why did Dre leave Death Row? Shit, I really don't know. Okay. You know, we was just working, we was just young, we was just wondering why he left, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. But, but Tupac was still there, so the energy was still real high. Yeah, the energy was high. My thing was why Dr. Dre left. Probably gotta ask Michelle Lay. I asked Michelle Lay. She probably the big cause of it. You think Dre left? I don't want to start no controversy. <laughs> well, I interviewed Michelle Lay. Uh... I mean, I seen that shit. You know what I'm saying? She fucked Death Row up too. You know, when she well, came in there trying to be the CEO. Oh, really? Yeah, she was doing all kind of dirt. And all that shit. Well, Mich Michelle A has a has a, a baby with with Sh with Dre, and she has a baby with Suge. In the hood, you tell me what is that? Scandalous. So you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, maybe she fucked Tupac or something. You know what I mean? They got a lot to probably do with it. So you feel that, that, up, you know what I'm saying? that Michelle A. Being with with Dre before and shit. Yeah, you know, after. I look at a lot of videos and shit that's on YouTube and shit. And I, I gotta find this one video on YouTube where she come in the studio and put her hands <laughs> all on Tupac chest and his head and shit. And I'm I'm looking like, damn, did he get the pussy? You know what I mean? Huh. So, Shug Knight, Dr. Dre, Tupac. Everything else was cool beforehand. Dre left. Death Row is still on fire. Yeah. Um, but it's turmoil inside the family, but you wouldn't know it. Okay. But well, from the outside, it looked like... Everything yeah, gravy yeah, like a motherfucker. The but, then, but then Tupac gets killed. Shit go haywire. Were you in Vegas? No, we heard about it because they was trying to get us to go to Vegas. And we was like, Dog Pound, we was really on our fuck Death Row shit, really. You know what I'm saying? We was At, already... We was already saying fuck that from. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 
we know we know everybody. You know, so you know me. I was young. I was you know feisty. I had fights with Suge Knight, Reggie, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And winning and slamming motherfuckers at a young age. You know what I'm saying? Well, you were having fist fights with Suge. All that shit, slamming his big ass. You know what I'm saying? What were the fights over? Money and sh other little shit and attitudes and you know that's why me and him was so close. You and Suge? Yeah, we was close. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, a little shit like that. Okay, so Krupp was still with Death Row when when Pac got killed, right? Because Krupp said he was the first person to leave after. Yeah, he left. He was gone already. He was already gone. Yeah, he was gone already. He was in Philly. Okay. Right when Tupac died. Yeah. What what happened after after Pac got killed? Shit, everybody started doing their own thing, and then. It's just turmoil and chaos, and then, you know, I was like, fuck that, we got too much over here, too many songs, and I was trying to figure out how can I get these songs that we did. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I became CEO of Death Row, president and all that other oh, shit. Oh, you became the CEO of Death Row? Like the president, I was running the shit. Okay, and Shug was the CEO? He was in jail. Was in, oh yeah, because after the fight, after the, the 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 Vegas thing, he was caught on tape kicking yeah. the dude. And, okay, so you were running Death Row. Yeah, Reggie Wright was running it. Okay, for and how I was long? A, and I was a creative force putting the shit together. What came out under your your reign at that time? I mean, I was just putting different songs. They had different songs and shit. I was just you know the gridlock soundtrack to make it um, the, um, Tupac gang related. Yeah. And then we fell out after that. You and Shook? Yeah, we fell out. What did y'all fall out about? I suckered them for the reels. I went and took all the reels and made all blanks, rewrote it, the titles on there, and gave them the reels. And I took off with the real masters. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and then you left Death All Row. hell broke, you know. All hell broke. Because Reggie didn't know nothing about putting the reels on there, listening to the tape and all this shit, you know. So, so you had the masters from all your shit or everyone's shit? <sighs> shit, all my shit. All your shit. And Tupac shit that I did, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, you and Tupac had a lot of songs together. Yeah. Some of the songs that I ain't even heard yet. Right. Are they coming out? Because the, they announced <laughs> that there's a new Tupac project coming. Is it going to be any of your songs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For a long time, you know, me and Michelle A actually talked about this off camera. You know, not that it was private, but she was saying how, you know, people, you know, everyone at death row was really crying when Pac got killed. Like, you know, because people are like, oh, you know, there's, there's always the rumor that Suge somehow set him up or something like that, which I thought was always ridiculous, you know? You probably asked that bitch, you pussy. Hey. Seriously, so you're saying, I'm my, fucking... Dr. Dre's baby mama, and he fucking you. I find out, you know, you getting fucked. What you supposed to do? I mean, you know what? Hey, you put that epidemic together. Hmm. What is that? I I'd Tic heard a tac toe three and a half. You know. <laughs> I mean, well, there was a rumor that Pac wanted to leave Death Row before he was killed. Is that true? If I get into it about the bitch and do all the other shit, I want to leave too. You know what I mean? This bitch fucking shit up. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. She want to put the blame on Dr. Dre busting the nose and all that shit. That's dirty doing a homie like that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you was slanging pussy everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And that was Sugar's girlfriend at the time? You know, all it was all sneak shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Money make you fuck anything moving around there. She didn't wasn't liking what Dr. Dre was doing. She wanted to feel some type of way. Should came in as the big. And then Tupac came and she was so enthused, a star, you know, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's Gemini is sneaky. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> okay. hey, you know, you turn your back with fuck your bitch, yeah.